Hello, NASDAQ followers. I'm Liz Glusko, and joining me today is Claire Wasserman, founder and author of Ladies Get Paid. Claire, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. Claire, please start by telling us what is Ladies Get Paid and why is it so important to your mission as the founder? Sure, yeah, so Ladies Get Paid uh, in one sentence is an educational platform, a global community and book all about helping women advance professionally and financially. We've been around since 2016. We've got 100,000 women in our community from all over the world. Uh, and it really is about helping to close the wage gap, the leadership gap, the investing gap uh, through taking command of your own personal finances and professional future. I love that notion of taking command of your financial endeavors. Can you please tell us some of the, key, the keys to unlocking potential in your own financial journey? Well, first, all the programming that we create, it starts with us, right? What are the questions that we have? What are the challenges that we're facing? And uh, we have a, a private community where more than 2 million messages have been exchanged, and we watch that. And we're building our programming off of that. So let me just start with my own journey. Uh, ignorance is not bliss. That was something uh, I learned painfully early on in my career. I opened up a credit card um, on my college campus, right, as many people do, and didn't fully realize that there is a thing called interest and the interest is quite high. So I kind of looked at it like free money. So first of all, lack of financial education was huge. Second, I never wanted to check my bank account for fear of what I would find in there, which is kind of ironic, right? If I'm concerned I don't have enough money, wouldn't you think that I would be checking my account? Fear is way bigger than rationality. So definitely got into trouble there. Uh, and, and something that really helped was finally realizing I was not alone, right? Because sometimes we carry shame around these things, shame because we think other people know more than us. It turns out a lot of folks have questions around money and realizing that I wasn't alone just allowed me to uh, feel better and also feel like maybe I could learn. And not only that, I could maybe help other women. Uh, and so being vulnerable, that was huge and committing myself to education and knowing that it would be a journey, right? That it would be continual and that it could be fun. Also, I, we try to make our, our education fun. Uh, otherwise it's, it's boring, it's overwhelming and it doesn't have to be like that. Claire, you were certainly preaching to the choir. Um, I think back to when I was in college with all my girlfriends and we would talk about interest in our first credit cards even. Um, and some of your fears were very valid. We had the same ones. So. Right now, we're in Financial Literacy Month at NASDAQ, and we're exploring the financial behaviors of the next generation of investors. Um, I know you recently got your master's certificate in behavioral finances, which is so interesting. So can you please share with us um, some of how ladies get paid helps others break their financial patterns? Is there a particular mindset or behaviors that are helpful for a woman when entering the financial world? What I learned in this course was First of all, what behavioral finance and financial psychology actually is, which is really, in short, trying to make sense of the kind of universal ways that we get in our way. Uh, and that begins with exploring how did we get here, really becoming our own anthropologist. Uh, part of my assignment was to interview my parents uh, to really look back at how they were raised. So not just starting with me, but understanding through the generations, what was the relationship that my family had with money? Uh, thinking about what's called financial flashpoints, the Great Depression, okay? How that changed the way my grandmother interacted with money and how that then got passed down. And what things were taught explicitly uh, versus what things were maybe just modeled and I absorbed it. And on top of all that, really understanding how we're socialized, right? General pressures that we may feel. And this is where it can get a little bit gendered, uh, where we're taught, let's not talk about money, that's rude, uh, to want a lot of it, that's greedy, right? To believe more for me is less for you. And I don't wanna to generalize too much, but those are themes that I was often hearing in our community. Um, and so one thing I would just really recommend for those watching who, you know, finding that this is resonating with you. Um, I would go uh, and discover your own money script. That's what it's called. Uh, and I have to give a shout out to my professors because they really coined the phrase money script. So this is uh, Ted and Brad Klontz. Uh, and you can go and take a quiz to find out your own money script at your mental wealth 
advisors.com. I'm not being paid for that. Uh, but who doesn't like to have a little quiz, you know, to where you're not getting graded, right? Uh, and then the next step from that, and this is something I'm super passionate about, is really walking through your behaviors without judgment, seeing when you make a certain behavior or don't make a behavior, right? In my case of not investing, but knowing that I quote should, what's the belief behind it or what's the trigger behind it? And then really just accepting there are consequences to my behavior because over time, compound interest, if I'm not investing, I'm losing money, losing money because of inflation. So really sitting with that and going, am I okay with not making the extra $20,000 that maybe I could? And of course, the answer is no, I'm not okay with that. I want to make that money. But it's not as easy as just, you know, getting over it. Sometimes you have to really break down an action plan, small actions like um, my goal for today is I'm going to do a bunch of research. My goal for tomorrow is I'm going to put 50 bucks into an account. I'm going to get consistent with checking that account. So it's, it's about the small steps because when you do that, you can feel proud of yourself and it won't be overwhelming, which, you know, again, is a word I've used before. This stuff can be overwhelming. There's a lot of jargon. It's intimidating, uh, but nobody was born knowing how to do it. So if they can learn it, you can learn it. Thank you so much, Claire. And by sharing your knowledge, you're definitely helping it to not be too overwhelming, hopefully. So when we speak about our money script, as you mentioned, um, we're definitely looking at our relationship with money and as well as future trends. So are there any trends you're seeing now that may be good opportunities for women to get involved in and potentially help you know, write their money script? Oh yes, this may not be surprising to folks, but during the pandemic, two major themes really showed themselves. So number one, we need emergency savings. Again, one of those things that you're told you quote should have, but it's like, hey, you know, you kind of put it off. And listen, I want to acknowledge there is a privilege to being able to save money in a sense, because if you are living paycheck to paycheck, you got to pay down your debt. You got to pay down, you know, the roof over your head. Okay. That being said, there were a lot of women in our community who were realizing that they could allocate funds that were more for like the fun money. They needed to be putting it to savings and maybe not just three months. They needed to be doing six months. Okay. The other trend that I've seen is just this zealousness, this urgency to invest. And I think in large part that came from in the pandemic, seeing, reading that there were a lot of people who made a lot of money. And I'm not just talking about GameStop, okay, or these meme stocks. There were people who made money through investments. And so they're looking at the economy going down, but the stock market going up and saying, hold on now, they're not related. And also, how can these people get rich? Like, I want to get rich too, right? So I've been really encouraged to see women like getting involved in investment, realizing that it's compound interest over time. So you don't need to have a lot of money in order to invest a lot of money. And then of course, you know, out of that, the big trend is crypto. Um, and so that that's our most popular. Anything we do around crypto, uh, we get the most folks showing up and getting excited about it. Thank you so much for sharing. So one thing we're definitely realizing, probably heightened since COVID, is a fast-paced investing landscape right now. So when it comes to women, financial literacy, and wellness, what's next? And how does ladies get paid play a role? Sure, yeah. So crypto, uh, I'll say that again. You're going to be seeing a lot more content from us. Out of crypto, I almost... Here's the thing, I started Ladies Get Paid because of an extreme concern around things like the wage gap, which has been here for many, many years historically, and it's calculated that it won't close for another 200 plus years, okay? But with crypto, there's a gap for sure. Only 15% of Bitcoin traders are women, but in real time, I think we can have a really big impact on it. So I'm excited to close that gap in, in quickly, in real time. And I'm not just talking about women investing in crypto. I'm actually talking about women getting jobs in crypto because they're going to be shaping the future that we all experience. So way more content from us in regards to crypto. Uh, our annual conference is actually happening on May 24th. It's called Get Money, Get Paid. It's our sixth time doing it, virtual, free. So no excuses. Every Everyone must come. And, uh, you know, other than that, jobs, more job board, because as we've all seen, the great resignation, a lot of companies need a lot of help getting ambitious women into those jobs. And we are delighted to help. So many exciting things coming out of the pipeline for Ladies Get Paid. Claire, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of NASDAQ Spotlight. 
thank you so much for having me. And just one final word to everybody. Education is everything, okay? And you can learn it. Everybody can learn it. You just need to spend a little bit of time Googling and talking about it. And whatever you learn, pass it on to somebody else. NASDAQ followers, that is Claire Weiserman, founder of Ladies Get Paid. Thank you for tuning in. And for now, we are signing off.